Well, hello again. I'm Dirge McIntosh, Hamid Galliard Stargazer, and you, you are going to be late to your cairn for your rite of passage if you don't hurry up. I understand that you still have a few questions that you want answered so you feel a bit more familiar with exactly what it is that you're being dragged into by becoming a Geru and, and having all the official stamps and seals placed on your character sheet. So I guess I'll give you a rundown of the basics and we can call this a formal introduction to Werewolf the Apocalypse. So I guess we should talk about the three primary abilities that you now possess that make you a werewolf as opposed to another kind of supernatural creature. And these would be your ability to shapeshift, your ability to regenerate damage, and the ability to step sideways and cross the gauntlet into the spirit world. Now, contrary to what most people think, based on movies and stories and such, werewolves are able to shapeshift mostly whenever they want. They're not dependent on having to see the full moon or anything like that. However, it's not an instantaneous or reflexive ability. It takes a little bit of concentration, and those werewolves who have both a good stamina as well as a strong connection to their instincts will tend to have an easier time shapeshifting than others. There are five different forms that a Geru can take. The Hamid form is, well, obviously the most human-looking form you have, and if you're a Hamid Geru, it's the form you're born into. Glabro is a more robust, near-human, I guess you could call it a quote-unquote wolfman form. It's good for light combat situations when you don't want to accidentally trigger the delirium in passers-by. Krenos is the form we're most famous for. It's the nine-foot-tall human-wolf hybrid killing machine, guaranteed to spark the delirium in mortals who see it. The delirium will cause people to freeze in place, try to hide, or run for their lives. Occasionally, though, instead of flight, you do get the fight response out of them. But more often than not, they will do everything they can to get away from the thing causing the delirium, i.e. you. And in the aftermath, they will revise their memories and try to explain everything they saw away as something more mundane than the truth. Hispo is an enlarged version of the lupus form, basically a dire wolf, primitive, primordial, more robust and savage, very much the glabro for the lupus as the glabro is to the homid. And lupus is, of course, your standard, average wolf body form. Geru who are born to wolf parents will default to the lupus form, as a human-born werewolf will default to homid. Only the metis will default to their krenos form. Now, there's not a whole lot to say about regeneration. As an ability, it's super useful. In a matter of minutes or even hours, you can completely heal an insane amount of damage under most circumstances. You will need to keep an eye out for magic items, the claws and fangs of Geru and other supernatural creatures, and weapons made out of silver. This will cause a form of aggravated damage that takes us much longer to recover from, and is the type of damage that is most likely to actually kill us in battle. The ability to step sideways into the spirit world is similar to shapeshifting in that it is innate to us, but is not an instantaneous or guaranteed process. Stepping sideways requires one to take a moment to reflect and meditate upon a reflective surface such as a mirror or a still body of water, and if the gauntlet there is thin enough, the Geru will be able to shift themselves into the other realm, and vice versa. A single Geru can lead an entire pack into the Umbra without each one having to meditate in such a fashion, but generally, only Theurges are known to have gifts that can allow a Geru to take a non-Geru into the spirit world alongside them. A werewolf can be trapped in the gauntlet between the two worlds, so one must be careful before trying to cross in areas where the gauntlet is particularly thick. So those are the three basic supernatural abilities that all werewolves possess. Now let's talk a little bit more about the culture that you now find yourself being dragged into. Though we seldom think of it this way, werewolf society, especially the tribes, are shaped by kinfolk culture far more than the other way around. Though they do not possess our great supernatural strengths, gifts, and powers, kinfolk vastly outnumber the amount of true Geru in the world, and some are very much aware of the evils we face and try to help us. It's not entirely unknown to even see kinfolk occasionally running in a werewolf pack, but these tend to be the exceptional exceptions. Quite a few kinfolk humans especially, will spend their entire lives completely oblivious to the fact that they are related to the werewolves. And because of that, we must all be ever vigilant for those occasional lost cubs that pop up where no one was looking. Your auspice will likely have an effect on what sort of role you will play in your pack. 
though packs vary greatly in concept, and each individual pack will have a completely different mixture of auspice roles. It is considered common wisdom that a good pack should have at least one of each of the five auspices. The unifying force behind every pack is that pack's totem spirit. There's potentially an infinite number of totem spirits to be had out there, but the ones we are most familiar with are also those same spirits that will be totem to entire tribes. The spiritual strength of totems can vary, most we classes in carne, but I suspect there's more than one that might just be an exceptionally powerful and clever jaggling. But the most common totems used by both packs and tribes are as follows. There are totems of respect such as Falcon, Grandfather Thunder, Pegasus, or Stag. There are the totems of war like Bear, Boar, Fenris, Griffin, Rat, and Wendigo. Totems of wisdom such as Chimera, Cockroach, Owl, Raven, Uctena, and Unicorn. And totems of cunning such as Coyote, the Cuckoo, and Fox. Not the News Network. A sept is a political unit that controls a region of territory. You could almost think of it as a pack made up of smaller packs. Historically, individual tribes would control many of their own septs. However, in modern times, especially in the Americas, the concept of the multi-tribal sept has become increasingly commonplace. A sept is hugely important to a Geru, and you will want to have membership in one, not only as a place of safe haven or to network with other werewolves, a sept is where you will have your renown recorded as you achieve victory in battle and other tests. It will also potentially give you access to a cairn and its ability to create moon bridges, but we will speak more of those in a moment. Werewolves do not advance in Geru society just on experience alone. If you want to gain higher rank, and with that rank the ability to learn greater gifts and abilities from the spirits, you must earn renown, glory, honor, and wisdom, done by deeds and combat and other situations that you have done to further the cause of your tribe, your pack, and that of Gaia herself. There are numerous ways to gain renown, as well as to lose it. So one must be careful to not dishonor yourself. In one form or another, it will require action on your part to raise your own renown. But with that renown, you will be able to climb slowly up the ranks. After your rite of passage, you will be first ranked at Clyath. But eventually, you will be able to achieve the ranks of Fostern and Greater. Until one day you yourself may get to sit amongst the elders of your sept, should that day ever arrive. Without renown and ranking, you will achieve no growth in your spiritual abilities. As they will only impart their gifts to those who have proven themselves worthy of them. And even then, it's not always so easy. A Geru who wants to learn a new gift, will have to travel into the spirit world, track down a spirit that knows that gift, and may have to bring them something or do something for them to get them to teach that werewolf the gift in question. On top of already having earned enough renown to get to go to speak to the spirit in the first place. A spirit's gift is no trophy to just pick up for participating. It is a quest in and of itself. Each sept will control one or more cairns. A cairn is a holy place, where the gauntlet is thinnest, and Gaia's energies bleed casually into the real world. Here we can perform our greatest of magical rites, and conduct most of our core ceremonies, including a ceremony that allows us to open moon bridges, gateways that allow the travel between different cairns all across the world, allowing werewolves, even in times of antiquity, to be able to place themselves on any battlefield if they can time it correctly. During your rite of passage, you will likely be required to enter the spirit world, possibly for the first time. You will be taken through the gauntlet into the penumbra. The spirit world, or umbra, is a many-layered thing. I have heard it described as being more a function of wavelength as opposed to physical space. The further you go into the umbra, the more your wavelength becomes out of phase with that of the real world, until you become lost in a realm of formless dimension. The penumbra directly reflects the living world, and it is where most of the spirits that we have dealings with hold their domains. Coexisting with the penumbra is also the dark umbra, where ghosts can be found, and the astral realm, neither of which are places that Geru visit frequently. The silent striders are said to have access to the dark umbra at times, and some stargazers have been known to travel into the astral. But for the most part, Geru stick to the penumbra and occasionally go into the near umbra. 
The near umbra can be described as being akin to the space and near orbit above our planet in the physical realm. Here, reality begins to break down, but there are 13 distinct realms that the Geru have knowledge of. You could think of these as alternate dimensions, or pockets of reality controlled by strange gods and spirits. You will not likely be going to any of these realms on your first foray into the Umbra, but it never hurts to know what you might run into out there, especially if you become separated from your pack. The Abyss is a realm of chaos and entropy, an infinite fall into darkness, where it is said that the only thing waiting for you at the bottom is the Maw of the Worm. The Ethereal Realm forms the border between the Near and the Deep Umbras. Geru maintain cairns here that we call Anchor Heads, and it is a place where one can come to speak with the Celestines themselves, and other high-level spirits. The Arcadia Gateway is all that remains of the realms of the Fey that we can still access. It is a sad shadow of what used to be on this world, where the Fey were greater in number. Their Seely and Unseely courts still struggling to resolve an ancient conflict that knows no end. The atrocity realm is a psychic stain left by the many horrors inflicted upon humanity by human hands. It is not a place to find glory, instead is a place to find sober reflection and a warning to be cautious about one's own actions and the unintended consequences that can spill forth from good intention. The battleground is similar in concept to the atrocity realm, a reflection of all the wars humanity has ever fought and all their forms. This realm steadily grows even to this day and there is no end in sight. The cyber realm is home to the weaver's most advanced spirits and like the battleground, this realm is continuously growing at an alarming pace as humanity's control and mastery of technology ever increases. Erebus is the personal hell for Geru, who have failed Gaia and are desperate to find atonement. The silver waters of this realm known to burn the impurities out of a Geru's soul. Flux is to the wild as Cyber Realm is to the Weaver. It is a shapeless, raw, chaotic realm of bubbling and writhing creative energies. The Legendary Realm is where Garu can go to meet with and relive the experiences of their honored ancestors. The strength of this realm is dependent upon our Galliards to keep the memory of the past alive. Pangea is what the world once was, a reflection of boundless nature untainted by human hand. Dinosaurs and Macaulay dominate this plane of existence. Scar is a dimension born from the dreams of the Industrial Age. It shares many features in common with Cyber Realm, though one of pollution and decay, instead of gleaming towers of steel and glass. Instead, this is a dimension of rusted steel beams and toxic oil spills. The Summer Country was a heaven of sorts once, a gift of Gaia's love for her creations that has slowly faded away and is harder to find than even the Arcadia Gates can be. Wolf Home is a dimension of pristine wilderness where all Geru who come there are forced to walk as their wolf form. Perhaps even a vision of the future, for ruins of human cities can be found throughout the landscape if one knows where to look. And finally, there is the festering sore that is Malpheus, home dimension of the worm, where his chief minions dwell, such as Beast of War, Eater of Souls, and the Defiler. There are other worlds than these, of course. These are just the realms that we are the most familiar with. Spirits, other changing breeds, and even human mages can be encountered in the Umbra, who may know of realms that the Geru have little experience of. I mean, hell, it was in the Umbra that I met my wife, Ophelia, and she's a mage. So don't just turn your nose up about what you might find in the Umbra. You never know. However, that being said, the Umbra can be a dangerous place. But so can the real world, and so you should not shun it. As you are half-spirit, you are as much a native to the Umbra as you are native to the real world. It's also quite easy to find yourself spending a long time in the Umbra. The gauntlet can prevent crossings from both directions, and I myself spent a good ten years wandering the realms of the near Umbra, searching for answers as to how I could have experienced and lived through the apocalypse, and yet still be here, and no one around me remembers. Had I gone mad, or was it real? In the end, it took my new associates amongst the mages to confirm that what I experienced did indeed happen. 
although none of them were able to figure out exactly how everything was put back in place, nor why even they couldn't remember. Some sort of error in ascension, or something like that, I remember one of them saying. I don't know. Well, the hour is growing late, and speaking of late, that's what you're going to be if you don't hustle out of here right now and get to your cairn for your rite of passage. I'll still be here when you're done, and I'll be able to tell you more about the things that you must face in your new life as a Geru. So until then, hit like and subscribe. Be sure to check out the links in the description box below. And thanks for listening to this old werewolf's tale. Return to the 3rd century BC and the very dawn of civilization in... Pax Luporum, Werewolves of the Republic. Complete with campaign setting source books for the island of Sicily and the island of Lesbos. Now available as a collected starter kit edition. Available now on Amazon.com and DriveThruRPG.